Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and you're looking at the vicinity of the Milky Way galaxy, the so-called galactic neighborhood. In this video we're going to be talking about the two nearby galaxies that are actually some of the most well-known galaxies to us, because for the longest time ever the humanity was actually using these two galaxies to navigate the um, oceans. They're known as the Magellanic Clouds. Let's talk about the Large Magellanic Cloud and its sibling Small Magellanic Cloud and most importantly discover, is there anything connecting them? So let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So both the small and the large Magellanic clouds are essentially the satellite galaxies of the Milky Way. Milky Way itself is located right here and you can kind of see that these two smaller galaxies essentially sort of orbit around the Milky Way. But in this simulation, and I guess in our sort of common understanding of galaxies, we don't really think anything connects them. We don't really ever think about what's happening between these galaxies. But in the last few years, and more specifically, I guess, in the last decade or so, we've actually discovered quite a lot of things that make you realize that pretty much everything in the universe is actually connected. For example, a few years ago, the scientists realized when they were looking at the night skies, there was something unusual going on with very uh, large amounts of gas connecting both the large Magellanic Cloud with the Milky Way and then also the small Magellanic Cloud with the Milky Way. The actual stream of gas um, was also moving really fast. Um, the speeds here were up to about 400 kilometers per second. And just to give you a comparison, our solar system is only moving at around 230 kilometers per second. So this was fast moving gas that was either approaching us or moving away from us. And what this gas suggested is basically a connection. It's a connection between the Milky Way and both of the other galaxies. And what's not surprising is that this gas, for the most part, seems to be moving into the Milky Way. In other words, think of it as a large straw. Straw extending from the Milky Way into the other two galaxies, where our own galaxy seems to be kind of seeping some of the material from them. So it's kind of like sucking all of this matter out of the smaller two galaxies into itself. Which is really not surprising, because our galaxy is more massive, but I guess we just never really imagined that uh, it would be something that we would detect uh, with our telescopes. So the so-called Magellanic Stream was officially discovered using Hubble telescope only in 2013. And it really makes us realize how essentially our galaxy is slowly absorbing everything around itself. I'm sure other bigger galaxies did the same, but what the Milky Way galaxy represents is essentially a collection of various matter that was slowly absorbed over billions of years. And it's of course something that hasn't really stopped and is still actively going on even today. But what's kind of not really that surprising is that most of this gas seems to be from the small Magellanic Cloud, from the smaller galaxy. In other words, it's the smallest galaxy that's been, I guess you can call it, bullied the most. But having looked around for some other signs, scientists also discovered other unusual connections. This time not just between the Milky Way, but between these two galaxies as well. And they named this the Magellanic Bridge. So the large Magellanic Cloud and the small Magellanic Clouds are also connected with each other. And here it's even more interesting because this is not just a gas connection. This is actually a connection involving stars and even tiny little oases of star formations, which is something we've never really expected to see. So there's literally tiny little star constellations in between of the galaxies, which unfortunately don't really exist in any of the simulations I have, but imagine as you travel between these two galaxies, you suddenly come upon an actual star constellation with active stars, with planets, with everything you expect from a typical star system. And of course there's a lot of gas here, but what's more, it also seems to have a relatively unusual and somewhat powerful magnetic field. The actual bridge itself seems to be magnetized, and it's something we couldn't really explain. It's something that we've detected only a few years ago, but even today we don't really know why there is a magnetic field in this bridge. But unlike the connection between Large Magellanic Cloud and the Milky Way, this connection here is not just gas. It's literally a stellar connection. 
I mean, hypothetically, if we're talking about an interstellar travel, you could definitely use these stars to kind of hop between them to finally make your way into the other galaxy. And there are actually a lot of stars here. Luckily for us, there are also the so-called Cepheid variable stars, which are stars that are typically known for increasing and decreasing their luminosity very periodically, and we've always used these stars to identify distances to certain objects. And because we've discovered so many different Cepheid variables in between the large and small Magellanic clouds in the so-called Magellanic Bridge, we'll now be able to very accurately and very precisely map it using basically a 3D map. We can totally make this into an actual 3D map of the entire connection between these two galaxies. Now, it might take us years to finally finish this, but it's definitely possible because of all of the stars we've discovered here. But personally, I find it fascinating that in between these galaxies, uh, somewhere out there, there is actually a region that we currently refer to as OGLE Island, which was only discovered in 2014 by the Polish astronomers, and it's literally like an oasis of stars that are all together, and it seems to be slowly moving toward the large Magellanic Cloud. Which, of course, suggests that all of this matter and all of these stars are slowly being stolen by the large Magellanic Cloud from the small Magellanic Cloud. In other words, all of this suggests to us that this beautiful galaxy, small Magellanic Cloud, is the one that's being bullied both by the large Magellanic Cloud and by the Milky Way. In other words, it's slowly losing its mass because it's sort of being sucked away from it or taken away from it by both of the partner galaxies. So honestly, all three of these galaxies are really fascinating. The connection between them really kind of suggests that, like I said before, everything in the universe, every single galaxy, is very likely connected. There's probably at least a gas uh, connection or possibly even a star connection, and there's very likely such connection between every major galaxy in the universe as well. And today, the scientists definitely think that such connection exists between the Andromeda and the Milky Way, and it's very likely we're going to discover it one day as well. And there are definitely a lot of hints suggesting that such connection exists because there are at least 600 different stars we've discovered between the Andromeda and the Milky Way in basically a sort of a web-like formation. So these uh, galactic filaments, as we call them, are definitely real and we today think that pretty much everything is interconnected. If you actually would like to see how all of these cosmic connections look like, um, you can use a simulation like, for example, this right here, the Illustrious Project, which simulates universe as we believe it is. And here you can definitely see these very beautiful formations that we call the cosmic web forming between every single galaxy. Even tiny, small galaxies like the large and small Magellanic clouds that are connected to the Milky Way. But all of this story will actually end in about two and a half billion years when both of these galaxies will very likely get absorbed by the Milky Way. This will also happen um, before the collision with the Andromeda and before the collision with other galaxy, the Triangulum Galaxy. But at some point, all of this will become one. The cosmic webs will disappear, but other cosmic webs will form with other galaxies. Until this happens, or I guess until we learn more about what's going to happen, that's it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it actually does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.